Hello, everyone, and welcome back to game two of our Captain's Draft winner series between Antunes and Rat Autocrat. I'm I'm War Leader, and joined with me once again is Crip. Yeah, we're back, uh, back to back casters here, as as we see from Gainer One, Rat are one game up here in this best of three, as we have similar bands coming out, and now I have a feeling, War Leader, that. Antunes are going to pick a better bot lane into what Rat are going to do. Yeah, I'm a little surprised to see them throw out the same bands, especially with uh, Kauri Zed dominating the mid lane, Pike in the support position. I, I, th I think there was a lot of what was uh, go going wrong there, so I'm a little surprised to see them stay the course, especially on those mid lane bands. And uh, it's this time it's Antunes locking in that Zaya first, making sure that Geico can't get it back, but Kaisa is the response. Okay, Kaisa is interesting. I think that does give away a bit that they're going to go for dive because, of course, Kaisa likes to pair up with CC champions, and that's most notably going to be engagers. So J4 also going to be paired up there. That does mean they give over the very coveted Zaya Rakan combo. And I do wonder if Rash is going to follow up. You know, typically you would expect something like a Nautilus or a Leona. The Thresh pick does offer a lot better safety into the J4, so they can go with that one as well. And that's no Zyra Kong combo here, War Leader. I I don't think that's particularly surprising. Bow Explode is, is playing a secondary role. I think it's important to get... Um, I, I know that Thresh isn't traditionally a champion that's seen as easy to play, but at least the what, what you what your, your floor is pretty high. Uh, and, I, and I think it's important to also take away that option from Sword Blue, who's notoriously fantastic on that Thresh. And we might see Blitzcrank come out as the counter pick to try and pick on him anyway. And I think that's really smart. Yeah, so the Blitzcrank here going to be used against the Thresh. Obviously, you don't want to be hooking in something like Zaya when Thresh has that Lantern just to basically reel him back in. So that Thresh is going to be hunting. Bow explode in this game here. Seraphine Band comes out. Maokai Band comes out as well. And I'm, I guess there is no... Uh, they're not really scared of the threat of the Sejuani coming out from Antunes here. Yeah. It's... Yeah, I don't think the Sejuani is, is too scary if you're really confident in, in that top side, which... I don't know. I feel, I feel like that's the part where there's actually some exploiting to be done. Uh, from the from the side of Rat Autocrat. I, I think that if Antunes are going to find a way into this game, it's gonna be off the back of this of this uh, the Cyrelia pick that I have to assume is going top. I don't think it's a, it's not a very pure Lama style champion, so I, I would be surprised if that was their game plan. But uh, okay. LeBlanc would be a LeBlanc. very reasonable pickup for Kauri. Very uh, you know, I, I think it's their second most comfortable assassin type pick after the Zed. And so I think it would be really natural to pick that here. Okay, wait, hold up. Okay, Ariria wants to play Tom Kench. We, <laughs> that's what it is. Ariria wants to play Tom Kench. She loves Tom Kench. Now, look, everyone's going to say, okay, Tom Kench, really good peel champion. That's not Ariri. Okay, Ariri likes to go in. He's going to be diving in there. He's going to be hitting that back line with the Tom Kench engage. That's his style. He's going to go for these kills. So I'm expecting some big plays from Ariri. And I'm expecting some aggressive ultimates coming out of this Tom Kench as Annie becomes the mid lane blind pick here for Antunes. And I think that's that's going to be really effective into a lot of Kauri's pool. That it, it's the kind of champion that does actually corresponds to what, what they've been banning. And uh, Vola Bear pickup for Utility Monster, I think, would be a really solid way to round out the draft. Although I, I fear it's lacking a little of identity if, if they do lock in the Vola Bear. It's kind of just a very generic, I hope we play well as a team, as a unit kind of draft without without really asking the enemy draft any any serious questions it's gonna be about those first opening angles when you're playing on volleyball because of course drops off in effectiveness in the game really good for diving so it's about how well can you push your early game advantages here and we'll see if they can create that in this game lux here being hovered 
And okay, that makes a lot more sense in the Aria. <laughs> Lux is a big yep. questionable here. Ari is going to be able to offer a lot of flank probability for Rat as well as being able to self peel and get away from champions like the Zaya, the Irelia, and the Vala Bear. And so I think the Ari makes a lot more sense. They're not going to blind it. They're going to feel better in the counter pick there. And looking at both of these drafts, of course, Ariri has to do a flex pick top side uh, champion who also doubles as support because, I mean, I mean, of course, Ariri's more more uh, well known on his support champions. Yeah, it, it, it makes some sense. I think it's a it's a bit of a wonky dive composition from the side uh, of Rat, and I I think in general I I still have to favor them. I think the the Kaisa Blitzcrank is going to do disgusting things in the bot lane, uh, kind of like what we saw last time last game. Uh, Geico and Sword Blue are just. Very, very, very good. I think that Ariri on Tom Catch is going to be difficult for Bruce Limit to get a substantial lead, and that's what Ansoons have to play towards. So, you know, I, I really am interesting. I am wondering the possibility. So, Ariri's going to go in uh, with the uh, I don't know what the spell is called, but where you dive into the ground as Tom Kench. Yeah, the, and the presumably Geico on Kaisa is also going to dive in. So, that means that they're actually going to be in close proximity to each other. So, Ariri can double engage and peel for Kaisa on the engage at the same time here. So actually, like conceptually, not a bad idea. No, I think it makes a lot of sense. And uh, it is going to come down to execution, but I, it's also not the, the most important part of the competition. To execute. <laughs> no. so, if they, so if they mess it up, it's like it's not even usually a tragedy. So I, th I think it's I think it's a pretty smart idea for them to go for that. Yeah, and they also have the potential of a Cataclysm into the knockup as well. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be a huge combo if they can land that. And then, For of course, sure. Kauri, Orb of Deception coming in from the side. Geico laying down the missiles. And they do have to watch out for this Annie, though. Pure Llama playing the Annie. That is a very strong engage as well as burst damage here. Uh, Sword Blue looking to line up a hook. Lands it. Ooh, and it's going to be a tragedy in the bot lane again. Flash forward, ignite last auto. First blood once again to Geico. Once again on the first wave of the game. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> they didn't respect the level two, and they didn't fight hard enough for it either. And so, yes, of course, Sword Blue. Geico, they're just gonna if you make any slight mistake, they're Whoa, just gonna Calvary. punish you. Wait a minute, the ignite ticking like walks it's back in. It. Oh no, I mean pops the health potion and then walks back in there were I mean yeah, I don't think that's, that's you either do one or the other. You go for the kill or you just disengage entirely. That was a little bizarre, I'm not gonna lie. Uh Cowry really just really misevaluating the minion wave. Uh it doesn't go well. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we're here for big plays, and you know yeah, what? Big I'll play. take it. I'll take it either way. So, Pure Llama up in the mid lane on the Annie, who I also highlighted as potential for real big engage for the team of Ant here. And if they can catch Kaisa with that Tibber stun, that's going to be huge. Sword Blue is also doubling up as a stealth ninja assassin here. And Avi walks by, and now they have the perfect angle. Oh, wait, the lantern? Yeah. Can oh. you get to it? Oh, to hook away. oh, it's not gonna happen. Gets the shield, doesn't get out. Bow explode, even has to flash out at the end. But counterplay in the top side. They're diving onto a re Wait, one more. Holy monster. Oh my goodness. Barely oh. not being able to get out from under the tower, which okay. really takes the, the, the air out of the sails on that play. But I, I overall, I think the play in the top side is still good for Antunes. It's just nowhere near good enough to mitigate the it's pretty the close side. to even because it really just can't teleport back pick up the rest of the wave it's not like they crashed it either bot side though they're looking to double up on this engage it's just brutal oh, down no. here if they pull this off and obvi's level two won't last that long however okay. we have utility the monster good. sword blue drops really low is he gonna fall first yes he is but they do trade over geico does drop the aggro on the turret and now walks right out of there. Brian, the last one standing here. That is too far deep. And they're going to go for a double knockup. And now Boxblood misses the hook. Hey, Gecko, he has to kite this out. But there might be enough damage in the kit. The shield comes down. The Chili Monster flashes in, but they get that turnaround. 
and now Geico, 1v1 with the support. We know how that's oh, going to go. Oh, no. Llama on the flank. There's so much action happening in here. Speed boost with the shield. Going to go for Brian Singh first. Okay. Is landing the autos. The execute picks oh, it up. Don't even stop. need to use the last flame there. The autos yes. coming down. Any autos are overpowered and gets the last hit kill with the oh, Q onto Geico. Uh, can we see the gold differential on these champions here? And okay. okay, that is 2x gold Whoa. pretty close on both sides of the matchup of mid and 80 carry here. But War Leader, um, um, I was not expecting that. No, I don't think any sane person would. It, it, it's such a nice edge from everybody involved. And uh, it's, still, it's still in favor uh, of Rat, who... I mean, the 5 and 1 Kaisa is going to be a problem all game. I think that Utility Monster uh, saw Red a little too hard there uh, on the fight, and the lethal tempo got stacked up, and Geico was able right. to dish out disgusting amounts of damage. But but Pure Llama is playing significantly better than what we saw last game, and is actually going to to provide some counterplay opportunities. And I, and I think that is going to be really important to have the the solo lanes from the side of, of Ant get involved and get strong and try and mitigate what has been a, a bit of a bot gap all series. Okay, Pure Llama does have Tibbers to block, is going to be able to dodge, and gets the counter yeah. engage right into Cowrie, and just absolutely One murders the fox here. Oh, they oh. get the re-engage. Geico's on level 6 yet, but they might have enough CC to get the AD carry in because position. Utility. Walking away here. Misses the void. And now Utility Monster is able to get the flank. And Pure Llama, 5 and 0. Ooh, Ooh. the flash hook from Sword Blue. It was ambitious, but it doesn't pay off here as they get corralled back to their turret. And now, I mean, 300 gold bounty onto Pure Llama. Uh, and now we can say Ant Tunes have the lead, War Leader. Oh, it happened. We weren't sure, but uh, whoever bet on the money line of Ant Tunes ever having a gold lead, well, hey, they got there. And hey, I mean, Pure Llama playing out of his mind right now, and it's given, it's given uh, Ant Tunes a real possibility in this game. I do think Annie being fed is significant because if Geico dives in the back line, despite the shield of Kaisa, there is a lot of burst damage in Annie's kit, especially right now. So is going to prevent Geico from getting optimal damage onto the back line. Has to play more carefully and assess whether it's time to dive or not. And that's going to reduce the Kaisa of effectiveness, in my opinion here. Yeah, I, I, I do think so. I think, I think, in theory, the Annie and the Thresh can combine to really shut down those Kaisa engages. And I think it makes... Oh, you tell me. Don't do Flash it again, bud. Oh, and it was, it was on oh. point. Just not enough tongue to get to Utility <laughs> Monster there. As, I mean, Ariri's been getting a lot of pressure, and he hasn't broke just yet. And So I have to say, Riri playing the weak side pretty well. Yeah, I, I think so. It's been going pretty well. Staying even in CS, the Irelia is no simple feat. Utility Monster, don't do it. Don't, yeah. don't hit that last cone. Just walk away. Just walk <laughs> away. Look, it, it was in his mind, but he, he definitely was like, what if oh, I just this... went and did this? <laughs> A box oh, flood. I knew about that playing, <laughs> playing with fate there. And yeah, they definitely know about that uh, utility monster blue. As you know, sometimes you have those crazy thoughts and you go, but it would be really cool if I pu pulled it off. <laughs> but then you just go, yeah. But I'm in a real game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a game that matters. <laughs> Can't just mess around and do all the fun stuff. Yeah, in a normal game mode, you just go in. You don't care. Right oh, there. yeah, for sure. All right, so this is going to be spotted by that ward into the dragon pit. But I don't think they have good vision on the dragon. They don't have a view of the HP, as I thought. They perfectly kite out right to the edge. They could go a little farther, but good enough here. And without Utility Monster, I don't see any reason to hang around and let Sword Blue land another hook on you. As <laughs> they do pick that up, and the Dragon Advantage goes to Rat, and the Gold Lead back in their favor with the Rift Herald. And so a series of good plays means that Rat have found their way into Advantage yet again. Yeah, and... They're, they're going to need to play a little more, I, I think, reserved than they did in their last one. They had definitely had a lot of times where they got ahead of themselves. 
And uh, and this kind of teams have have a be- just a better composition, and they're playing better too. They found advantages in the mid lane. They found a small advantage in the top lane, uh, and so they're gonna have to be a little more reserved. But we we've seen this bot lane, especially do oh monsters. aggressive nice play here. Okay, the hook goes wide from Sword Blue, but burns the Feather Storm, and so now Navi has lost a very important defensive ability. Burst limit, looking for a bit of a tricky play of over the wall against Kauri here. Pure Lama has the stun. Definitely going to be enough damage in the kit of these two champions to take out Ari as... Oh, it looks like they're saying now is the time! Engage oh. over the wall. The sword dance doesn't land, but the stun from Annie is just too oh, hard to miss. Oh, Burst in trouble. Wait a Pure minute. In trouble. Wait, then now the turret aggro goes through and Brian Singh picks up the kill utility Oh, monster. this is so bad. Oh, wait, you might have to double think this because Burst Limit gets hooked away from Geico, but the damage still lands through true. And they find themselves even in kills and up in gold. And that dive was looking good, but only for that moment there, War Leader. That's, that's kind of a bit of a heartbreaker for the side of Antudes. Yeah, that's a really backbreaking play. I don't know if there was miscommunications from the bot lane about the positioning, but it's going from bad to worse now. Utility monster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's he's looking more like a teddy bear than a monster this game. <laughs> I, I, I would have to agree. It's uh, it's not going their way. You know, bot lane gets a little bit of time to recuperate, uh, but it's still. I mean, the gold gap in that bottom lane is. You know, probably about an item at this point. I'm this Kais is going to buy some ridiculous things on this recall. I'll tell you what. Yeah, I think the the problem right now Antunes is kind of having is they want to get the Annie Roams unlocked, and Pure Llama has been stuck in the mid lane for a couple minutes now. And even though they're trying to dive Kauri on the Ari here, Ari is already behind. You need to start affecting bot lane matchup or top lane. In my opinion here, War Leader. So maybe you can talk about maybe who, which lane do you prefer and potentially this gank going on right now. Oh, flee, flee. Okay, hook works too. Goes in, bow explode, puts down the cage, but there's just no damage. Are we fighting back to though? Now. There is going to be a flash out. Brian saying is arriving to the play and they burn the cooldown, but things are tough now. Pure Llama fighting Sword Blue. Sword Blue dropping very low, but they just don't have the damage to finish. And Utility Monster does not care about his own life. And that means Pure Llama's trapped one versus three in the ring. Bow explode and burst limit. Uh, can't can't decide where they want to go. Burst limit trying to finish off a Riri is going to throw out all Wait. the scops to get it. But the lantern, it comes out. Burst limit tries to get up. Zero HP is going to get dropped, and Geico is the cleanup through 10 kills, 12 and a half minutes. Even in the bottom lane, Kauri's fighting a solo kill. And it's getting yeah, no, it's it's a 10 on one Kaisa, 12 minutes into the game. That's tough. Yeah, this was, this game is just turning upside down and backwards for Antunes now. And they're having such a hard time activating Pure Llama because if they are the ones who have their foot on the pedal, they have this Annie Engage coming out onto someone like Geico. There's enough burst damage in the kit maybe even just a slight help from anyone and they could start picking up kills and turning the game around but multiple times they're not the ones making the first play and in fact pure llama gets caught out and it's just so hard to win these fights without the power that was invested into this annie for sure i mean the, the annie had everything going in, in, in the early stages of the game and uh it's really just not gone their way for the rest of it and uh makes things rather tough yeah, meanwhile, Geico. I mean, it was really Pure Llama versus Geico in the early game, and now Geico 10 1 in 1, 650 gold bounty, almost maxing out the gold bounties there. And so, just well on his way to carry this game yet again. Yeah, like they're uh, looking I mean, here. Ooh, going to find Bow Explode early, that, down very early, and now it's 4 versus 4. Riri's just. Hanging out of that dragon pit, waiting for it to spawn. Doesn't need to be here in the fight because Steve's got it handled. Yeah, that definitely was trying to score up there, and they just got sucker punched by the hook. Yeah. And, well, once you're... I mean, it's hard enough to win 5v5. Harder 4v5 there. And so now Antunes, they probably have to find a win on the map where they're not grouped up at this point. I don't think they could really win a team fight. Have to play the pick game, and... 
Honestly, it's not an easy game to play War Leader. Definitely, definitely not. Especially it's, when you're behind like this bad as well. I mean, no map pressure. Vision going to be cut out very soon as well. And the, 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 good, news the, that, the good news is that you know exactly who, what, what you have to do. Like, you just have to you have to kill Geico. Well, now, I think everyone in right. the game is aware, though. <laughs> exactly. Right. I, I didn't say it was easy. <laughs> but, but, but you know what you have to do it's like you you, you you know you maybe find try and find advantages in other places to to try and get to a point where you can but but the goal is access that big shutdown deny the vast majority of the da the damage on the side of of rat autocrat because Cowrie's not in an amazing spot if they're able to find a pick onto the kaisa things are not pretty yeah carry kind of playing a utility role Everfrost is going to solidify that as well. This Riptail comes crashing in. They get that first turret in the mid lane as well as a crash. So good value out of the Riptail there. I do think that, in, I mean, it's not like Geico's playing the safest AD carry. And the only real peel option is Aruri's ultimate. So there is, it's not the most peel in the world. Geico could certainly die here as they're going for another team fight. Yeah, and, and so far it's uh, looking the same as usual. Geico get, picking up a blue buff in the middle of it, folks. But trying to get an obby to safety, Geico says, "I'm gonna expend that R button and clean up once again." Another two kills, thirteen and one on this Kaisa, and needless to say, it's a monster game. Definitely will not be able to win a T5 without Annie. I mean, it, it just has to be Annie has to be there with the AOE with the CC. And so every time they fight without Annie, expect that one to be a loss 100% here, despite burst limit on this Irelia. I mean, it is a threat to Geico, but the rest of the team will be able to come through and provide enough damage to stave off burst limit from getting to Geico. Right. Uh, I, Geico's, you know, had a fine game. It's, Wait, it's, look at the build, though. Geico, I mean, burst limit. Burst limit's had a, a fine game, but just not able to overcome geico who is uh you know on three items at 17 minutes into the game i'm sure <laughs> but this every is a adc weird... player <laughs> wants to be there. on hit build so that is i mean it's cheaper than the full crit and you're gonna be able to hit three items like this because of that this early in the game but yeah that is an interesting build i haven't seen on hit kaisa wow that is a lot of damage that just got dumped at the navi there <laughs> yeah uh a lot more damage than I was expecting. Wait, so our blue right on the flank. Oh, this is good. This is actually looking fairly good for Rat, but they're, they're trying to put all their damage into a Riri right now, and Sword Blue's now arrived to the fight, and it's a Burst disaster. Kauri almost finds the kill in the Navi, but it's going to be Brian Singh who assassinates on the J4. Meanwhile, Utility Monster gets the <laughs> turret and tries to back out of there, gets spotted by Kaiko. And, well, if there was a Baron, it would be sure to be taken. However, this game is only 18 minutes in, and they're just going to chase down for kills and push mid lane at the same time. Flashing for a single oh, kill onto the jungler. Goodness. Definitely not worth the value, but the mental damage, War Leader, might just be worth it. I'll tell you, I, I, I have the mental damage from watching this series. <laughs> And it's been it's been the Geico show in the bottom lane and Sword Blue of course as well, uh, dominating throughout the entire map and uh, Rad have just looked like the better team in the map. Yeah, Kauri is able to recover in the game now. Just looking across the items, I have to say Brian Singh probably a, a really good jungle this time around. However. I mean, we do have to preface, uh, of course, every time Sword Blue and Kaiko are stomping lane. Makes the, the juggler's job a lot easier, but I think had a pretty good showing this game. Yeah, I, I'd have to agree. I, Brian saying really impressed me in the jungle, and in general, I think outplayed the utility monster just kind of throughout the set. I mean, I think I think the... You, you can look at all the nonsense that's happening in the spotlight right like now, like Geico picking up the 15th kill, but I, I think there's been a very interesting subplot uh, of the two, like, UV junglers playing. Daito's in trouble! Flash forward! All forward! Utility Monster wants it! <laughs> and he will 
have it. Shutdown goes over to that Vola Bear, but now a full fight's breaking out as every member of the team has arrived. Sword Blue does get dropped, and now he has to try and flash away. Kauri trying to finish off the Zaya and the Cataclysm. Will ensure it goes down, but they spent so much burst limit fully stacked trying to find damage but a riri is so hard to take down and two versus one versus three burst limit gonna have to make something crazy happen the flash away to try and survive but there's no way to make this outplay you just don't have the gold burst limit valiant effort there is finally slain falls to the ground there Blades around him. Third dragon on the table. And they're just going to pick that right up. And that was a team fight basically without Geico. And they still lost. Granted, Pure Llama wasn't there as well. I do have to say, was 5-3 and three on the Annie, right? But still manages to do 80% of Geico's health bar with the wit's end. So, yeah. like, mages are just so strong against 80 carries. If they're in position, of course. And so, Geico... It's just self fed was able to survive oh, and get yeah. enough damage back. They're going to go for Baron. And I imagine, I mean, look, we, we definitely thought the game was over. But, I mean, this is the cork into the bottle that is the end of this game here. Yeah, uh, you know, the minions are going to be wearing purple. There's a 15 kill Kaisa. Everybody's positive except for the support. Sword Blue gets <laughs> another hook. Now Inavi gets another get, yeah. kill. <laughs> Oh, they're chasing down Utility Monster again. This has happened many yeah. times as well. <laughs> a lot of uh, running away on the bear. And despite the movement speed, is not going to be able to make it out. And three members down. They're going to get this in hip. Do they go for the end? Are they going to put them out of their misery? Really? Or are they going to mess around in the final moments? Well, they could do both. Plays? <laughs> they could do both. Pure yeah. Llama, though. They're just letting Pure Llama get in position. Yep. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, Cowrie puts it into that. <laughs> oh, <there's laughs> First none of that happened try, here. But uh, there's so much damage coming out from Geico. It gets eaten up to deny some of that DPS. Let the other teammates get involved. Uh, the utility Riri monster... does like doing that. I, yeah. You know, Riri will eat you just so that you will do less damage. He does like yeah, doing Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, that is going to wrap up this series. Very dominant win from rat in this series both games monstrous performances from the bot lane and uh it, there just wasn't much of a fight to be put up i think both solo lanes uh fr from the side of of ant generally across the series were able to outplay but not to the margin of that bottom lane which was just so tragic i think teams need to really strategize around some early pressure bot lane War leader i don't even like put some ward downs walk in there put some ward downs level one pick heimerdinger do something i mean uh, you know sword blue's having fun picking these hook champions well heimerdinger is a hard counter can someone like think of something i need a strategy being applied here don't just let them do whatever they want i don't know i think i'd rather lose the game than the heimerdinger support but that's just me <laughs> oh. <laughs> war leader has too much pride to play a, 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 a very meta champion apparently here. <laughs> uh, hybriding is boring. Anyway, what's not boring is going to be this next series that we do have coming up between the other two teams. So make sure to stay tuned for that one. Uh, this has been a very fun series of Captain's Draft and I hope to see you all the next time FOF needs a caster.
teammates, so no. Huge pentash. Yep. Hello and welcome back, Fenderfoe family. We are here with the victory interview. We've got Team Rat, a celebrity we haven't seen in quite a while since season three, I believe. Uh, Rat, or previously known A Click Sword Blue. How are you feeling after your victory, my friend? Good. Um, it was it was a lot of fun. Yeah, you know, and uh, you know the the format of the tournament, you know, being the captain's draft. I'm sure it was uh, kind of a fun thing for you to come back and figure out, you know, some of these new faces that people have gotten to know. So, how has it been, you know, kind of figuring out your guys' team dynamic and, and and leading up to the event? Honestly, um, like we didn't really scrim or anything like that. I don't know if other teams played flags or scrimmed it, scrimmed, but we kind of just went 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 with it. And um, we just talked about our champs pool and like what like what kind of a player we are, and we just went from there, right? Um, we just f found our strengths and weaknesses as a team together. Yeah, definitely. And you know, of course, we have to touch on it. You know, I imagine with uh, you and Geico, bot lane has must feel pretty good overall in the in the the feeling of the tournament. And as a side note, I I bet it must feel pretty good to uh you know go against your former teammate uh, burst limit there. So. How, how, how are you feeling on those two dynamics? <laughs> yeah, honestly, uh, Geico's a really, really, he's a really good AD carry. And, you know, I have a lot of respect for him. Um, for the team, I mostly, you know, I, 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 uh, what is it? At the end of the day, I want everybody to speak up, not just me. Um, and with this team, everyone speaks up, right? So, like, that, that's what makes it awesome, is that we can listen to each other and we can fulfill our duty. And with uh, Burst Limit, I mean, I miss him a lot. Um, he's a really, really good player. And again, you know, this tournament is just like a for fun tournament, but it's also very competitive competitive at the same time, which, you know, which I, uh, I really love it, so. That is true. And, you know, uh, how does it feel going from like, you know, you're a player and then you've been coaching Art of War for all this time. And of course, now you're playing on a team with O'Riri. So you kind of got to have that that cool, like little mentorship kind of thing going on. So how is that feeling, you know, going through those different stages and, and it ending up here? Honestly, it's been very interesting. Uh, at the end of my league career, I, I really want to I really want to become a coach and share my knowledge to other people. Um, like that's my goal right now. And, you know, I'm it was rough at the start. Um, from you know transitioning transitioning from league to a coach 
because I still had to learn a lot of things. But again, I play for a collegiate team and, you know, my coach gives up really good information. And like I and I kind of try to just try to emulate what he does and, you know, like the environment, like what needs to be fixed in the game. Um, but so far, I really, really love it. And I'm still a player now. But, you know, once I retire, um, you know, the goal is just to be a coach and try to help people as much people as I can. Right on. I like that. I like I like the collegiate scene. I like how you're kind of, you know, going through the space and going to give it back. So that's going to be exciting to see. You know, looking at this tournament, of course, you have now secured your place as far as like the victory. So you will be in tomorrow's finals. Looking at the other teams, who are you expecting and who do you want to actually play against tomorrow? Um, it, it, doesn't, really, it doesn't really matter which team. Um, honestly, I respect everyone and, and everyone's like, you know, trying their best. Um, I don't really know uh, a bunch of these players, but you know it's just it's just fun to go against um, against them and just try to enjoy the um, finals for tomorrow. Fantastic! And do you have any maybe spicy pick that you kind of holding in that BO5 series, or are we just gonna keep seeing the Pike uh, grinder going on? Uh, it really depends, honestly. It really depends on the comp. I might bring something spicy tomorrow. We'll see. Fair enough. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. Sword Blue has been fantastic to, you know, be able to talk to you again. Seeing you back on FF stage is fantastic. Uh, but yeah, with that, we're going to go ahead and throw it to break. We're going to come back at 4 p.m. PST, which is just a little less than an hour. And we'll be coming back with Team Jar versus Team... I'm totally spacing the name. RLS, thank you so much, uh, broadcaster. And uh, yeah, we'll see you all soon. Don't go too far. <laughs>